NBC will interrupt all of its programs to bring you the latest bulletins. Ladies and gentlemen, Bristol Myers, the makers of iPana for the Smile of Beauty and Sal Hepatica for the Smile of Health, present It's Time to Smile with Flight Officer Jackie Coogan, Nora Martin, Bert Gordon, our Russian friend, Emily Kipp, Moitel from Brooklyn, Vincent Travers Orchestra, yours truly, Harry Bonzel, and starring Eddie Kazer. Yeah! might be going bad. Could you please tell me what time it is? Six o'clock, dear. Yes, I thought so. So maybe my mind's going, but what time do I usually like my martinis freshened? We've discussed this, dear. You promised to be on your best behavior for Rachel. Ah, uh, yes, the new boyfriend. <laughs> so soon after the last one. And I suppose there comes a time when Father must sit back and watch his little girl spread her legs and fly. Rachel seems very serious about this one. She says she's in love. Oh, wonderful. On second thought, bring me two martinis, would you? You can have all you want at dinner, dear. As many martinis as your heart desires. Mm -hmm. He'll be here any minute. Well, it's tired of reading the paper, anyway. Can you believe how popular this boxing nonsense has become? I don't see the appeal myself. If I want to see two Negroes beat each other half to death, I'd just drop a corner on the sidewalk. I'll go get the table ready. Okay, you just... So, you're the expert. You tell me how much alcohol will I have to consume to tolerate this one? He's wonderful, Daddy. He's the most smartest, sweetest, nicest, most open-minded person I've ever met. Which means you'll probably hate him. I see. Well, may I have the honor of knowing this paragon of virtue's name? Please be nice. I'm always nice to those who deserve it. Hey, Rates. You didn't tell me you had such great clouds above your house. You are looking all decked out. Thanks. This is my dad. Namaste, Mr. Hightower, sir. It's like an honor to meet you. I'm sure that it is. Namaste is a traditional Hindu greeting, Dad. It means I bow to the divine in you. So you're Hindu then? Well, that'll be a problem, because tonight we'll be eating several animals you people consider magic. Oh, you know, I'm a little of this, a little of that. I'm like a human sponge, man. I soak up knowledge wherever I go. Well, judging from the stench, that's not all you soak up. Now, where I come from, we don't do that. What are you doing? Just taking off my shoes, man. Something I picked up when I was in Japan. It was amazing. Tell me something, Doobie. Do I look Japanese to you? No, sir. Good. Because I thought for a minute you had mistaken me for a sneaky little deceptive Jap. I assure you, this house is not Japan. And I fought a war to keep it that way. Now kindly put your shoes on and come in the house. Man's gotta have his rules. I can dig that. 
Dobie, we've heard so much about you. Oh, my. Mm. <laughs> you have such interesting clothing. Thanks. I got this coat at Monterey. Can you believe the stuff people want to throw out? It's because it has a little vomit on it. <laughs> Dobie. <laughs> Such an interesting name. Where does it come from? My wife's too polite. What she meant to ask was, what on earth were your parents thinking? Dad. That's all right, Mr. H. Doobie wasn't really the name I was born with. I chose it. Or maybe you could say it chose me. Like my man Bobby D once said, sometimes we're just born with the wrong names. And as for my parents, they died in the war. The man who spawned you fought in the war? I find that hard to believe. What unit was he attached to? Oh, no, they were lovers, not fighters, man. They died in a camp. Ah, uh, see. So they didn't actually do any fighting. <clears throat> that makes much more sense. Oh, my gosh. That is so terrible. I'm so sorry that I brought it up. That's all right, Mrs. H. Growing up, the only mother I needed was Mother Earth. So you're of Jewish ancestry. Well, that would explain the unfortunate facial features. That nose is classic kike. Dad, stop talking. I've got a good eye, Mr. H. Don't get me wrong. I'm proud of where I come from. But for me, life is all about So where exactly did you go to school? I didn't really go to school, per se. Traveling was my teacher and experience my master. Public school is just a part of the man's system designed to keep honest folks like us down. Would you be talking about the system that's charged with educating future generations so that they are qualified to acquire jobs and become productive, hardworking, valuable members of society? Yeah, man, that one. It's true, Dad. Higher education is just a state-sanctioned scam. It's designed to make money, not teach people. And the only thing it does teach is how to conform to the government's ideal image of an obedient society. You should read Karl Marx sometime. If I wanted to voluntarily kill my own brain cells, I'd buy a Beatles album. So do we. If jobs are so evil, how exactly do you plan to financially support my daughter? Our love transcends money, man. I see. Does your love also transcend poverty and starvation? It won't be like that. The world's growing up every day, whether you like it or not. Soon we won't need the permission of little pieces of paper to love and support each other. Well, the world may be growing up, but you clearly have not. And I thought your generation was entitled before. And now you're telling me that you expect to sit back and have everything handed to you on a silver platter. You've got it all wrong, Mr. H. We're not going to sit back. We're going to go out there and find our destiny. We're going to go out and travel the earth, learning from the world and her people. One day, maybe we'll sweep a farmer's porch for a meal and a place to stay. The next, we'll sleep safe and secure in nature's embrace. No offense. That was the most astoundingly idiotic thing I've ever heard. None taken, Daddy-o. I think it sounds wonderful. I always wanted to travel. Quiet, dear. Why do you always do this? You are constantly bringing everyone down around you with their small-mindedness. People like you are the reason nothing ever changes. And what exactly would you have changed about your life? Would it be the part where you were cared for and sheltered? Or maybe it's the part where you were well-fed? Or I don't know, maybe it was where, the part where you were raised by two loving parents. Yes, if only. Someone would stand up for the privileged ingrates of the world, if only. Rachel, how did you and Doobie meet? Now that's a groovy story, Miss H. We first met when I was learning from the stars at an acid meet. A uh, what meet? See, there you go again. Drugs aren't inherently good or bad. They're just another part of life. I let you reach new levels of your subconscious, man. When I first met Rachel, I thought I was just high up there in the trip, seeing angels. When I came back down, Angel was still there. Oh, that's so precious. We talked for hours about all the wonderful things we had seen. I wanted to stay in contact, so he gave me his number. Where did he roll up his sleeve? Dad! You really do set yourself on some kind of pedestal, don't you? 
The people that had those tattoos burned into their skin have to live with that for the rest of their lives. This is exactly what I'm talking about. You go out of your way to be an asshole. Language. I know, Rachel, it's all right. You gotta try and understand the place your dad is coming no, from. No, it's not all right. He's always been like this. He's a bitter old man who won't be happy until he makes everyone as miserable as he is. Young lady, when I was your age, we showed our father respect. Bitter and square though I may be, I'm still your father. Like you were ever my age. I think just because you didn't have any fun when you were young, means you wanna make sure no one else does. Well, let's see. When I was your age, I spent my days being shot at and my nights cleaning the blood and piss stains off of my pants so that they may get up the next morning and be shot at some more. So no, I wasn't having very much fun. Did it ever occur to you that I went through that hell to ensure that you would not have to? Right on, man. Nobody's talking to you. You use that war as an excuse for everything, but guess what? You don't get to blame a lifetime of being a judgmental, prickly dick on something that happened 20 years ago. I think you just like to stare at your shiny medals so you can pretend to be a decent person. Who wants dessert? I think I'm sensing some bad vibes in this room. You know, I've, I've got just the thing. When I was in India, a very wise guru taught me an ancient method for cleansing the negative energy. Oh, please do. Show us. How to sight. Just gotta get my chi into order. <sighs> gotta let out the bad vibes, breathe in the good energy. Understand. Do you feel more relaxed now? Yeah, man. Totally enlightened. <sighs> Nothing like a light exercise after dinner. I'll show the young man out. We're not finished eating. I said I'll show the young man out. Yes. I can't thank you enough, Mr. H. You did one bang up job raising a daughter. I just want to say, Rachel's very special to me. In fact, she's a straight up pussycat. Yes, I'm sure she's very special. Just like the rags you find in your garbage can. You wear them out and then you move on to the next one you find. I'd say it's been a pleasure. Wait, Mr. H, this may just be that crazy imagination of mine doing its thing again. I get this crazy idea that you don't like me very much. <laughs> I know. Ridiculous, huh? Well, I just want you to know, I think you're a real stand-up cat. Like, I respect you big time, if you know what I mean. I'm sure that I don't. Well, what I'm really trying to say is, I really like your daughter. She's the light of my life, the Simon to my Garfunkel. She's the light in my tower. What I really want is your blessing, man, because I want to ask her to marry me, man. Would you have a drink with me? daughter. Why on God's green earth would you want to do that? I feel happy around her, man. 
She completes me. It's like we were separated at birth and we're only now finding each other. We're like a guitar. She's the soft, smooth wood and I'm the silky guitar strings. Together we make beautiful music. How nauseating. I didn't think you people believed in marriage. I was more under the impression that you'd stick your head between any two legs that'd open up for you. <laughs> nah, man. Free love is good and all, but when you find the one, well, they're the only love you need. That's not an image I needed in my head. What about children? Aren't they gonna interfere with your grand plans to travel the world? Kids, I, I haven't really thought about it much, you know? But yeah, I, I think I could be a great dad, just like you. In the world we live in with the man making bigger and bigger bombs, we could die any day. I just wanna leave a little piece of me behind. You know what I'm saying? Yes, yes, very interesting. Like what you said about fighting the war to make a better place for the people of tomorrow. I get that, man. Not, not the war part or anything, but I want to make this world a better place for the people of tomorrow. Have you ever heard of Timothy Leary? He's my hero. He's all about breaking down the doors of perception, elevating your consciousness, questioning authority. That's what he's all about. Well, in the world we live in, Lucky, you know, go the way of that Martin Luther King. <laughs> See, that's the thing. A lot of people are scared to question the way things are just because that's the way it's always been. Like, even our senses, man. You ever wonder if things are the way they are because that's the way they actually are or because it's the way the man tells us that's the way they are? I don't follow. Like, take this table. For example, it's a table because we agree it's a table. But what if we agreed it was something else? What if we agreed it was, say, a tree? Would it stop being a table just because we stopped calling it a table? This is a table. It's not a tree, and this discussion has ended. You got it. It's still a table because it's a table at heart. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't like, ask questions. I mean, has anyone ever talked to a table? I once talked to a table for over an hour. And what did you learn from this, no doubt, intellectually stimulating exercise? The table didn't want to talk to me, man. A sentiment I can sympathize with. The reason I'm telling you all this, because, well, I have a gift for you. What in God's name is that? It's a picture frame, man. You look through it to get a new frame of reference. Life is all about new experiences, seeing everywhere and everything you look at as a new adventure. The reason I want you to have it is, well, I, I better get used to calling you dad. for it. <clears throat> yeah, I, I guess I guess it is getting late. I think I'll be hitting that old dusty trail. Um, do you mind if I do my meditations before I go? I don't like to bring any bad vibes with me out on the road. Knock yourself out. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> Never shut up. talking tonight, young man. 
perhaps it'd be a good idea for you to try shutting up for a minute, listening. I could tell you what's running through your veins. What be the use? nor liquid nitrogen if somebody told you not to. Besides, I want you to feel at home. I imagine you're well used to being doped half out of your mind. Now, Doobie, let's talk about my daughter. Oh, dear. And I thought the dinner went so well. Not your fault at all, dear. Dinner was superb, as usual. Doobie and I just have a few minor disagreements we have to work out. Well, don't stay up too late, dear. You're always grumpy if you don't get enough sleep. It was very nice to meet you, dear. We have a great relationship. Where were we? Ah, yes, we were discussing Rachel. There's something you should know about me, Toby. I have a certain talent for getting what I want. You know, there's not many things in life that I feel needed to stand up and fight for. But when I do, you can rest assured I will get what I want, one way or another. And what I want now, boy, is for you to stay away from my daughter. Why? 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 You insult what little intelligence you have by asking why? Because you, my dear boy, are a cancer. You and your entire so-called movement. You don't want to change things. Not really. All you are is just a pack of bored, stone teenagers. I was your age. I certainly wasn't bored. I would have given anything to be bored. But instead I went to war. Where I saw my best friends killed in front of my face. And I would do it all again. You wanna know why? of this and my loving wife and my beautiful daughter because of my life I'm pretty happy with my life I fought for it and I'm certainly not going to let some junkie who's never worked a day in his life take it away from me Doesn't have to go down this way.
my life, I've done terrible, unspeakable things to other men. Quite frankly, I don't like you half as much as I did them. Now you imagine the most horrible thing that I could possibly do to you surpass your expectations. Now, we could go down that road. Or we could go down this road. How much is that? More money than you'll ever see in your lifetime. No deal, man. Are you serious? You and the corporations, you're all the same. You think money can buy anything. Well, not me, man. All I need is love. do that? Did I do something wrong? No. Nothing too bad. I just left a note and said, you'd always love me, but you can't be with me. What did I do? It's not you, sweetheart. It was him. He was an immature boy who was going nowhere in life. He was only using you as practice. You may not see it now, but you are too good for him. You'll find a nice, hard-working boy with real American values, and you'll make that boy a very happy man. You are a beautiful, reasonably intelligent young woman. And you can have anyone you want. You mean that? I do. Someday you'll be a dutiful wife. Not today. Not today. Mm. Thanks, Dad. Sure, baby. Oh, uh, Rachel, could you refresh my martini? Sure thing. <laughs> 